What's up party people and welcome back to my channel. So today I feel like being sassy and talking about products that I regret buying. These are product fails, disappointing products. You get the gist. So before we do, let's do the disclaimer. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean you don't have to like it. Just because I say it's not good doesn't mean it's not gonna be good for anybody. These are just my opinions. So let's get into it. So first up is the Maybelline Shadow Block Eyeshadows. These were like $14 when they first released. I believe they've come down to like nine or 10 now, but what is this? Number one, packaging is way too bulky, okay? It's just like super unnecessary. It's clunky, it takes up too much space in your organizer or on your vanity or whatever. The shadow to packaging component ratio is just, it's not right. Also, the formula was just so hardly pressed. Like it just, it's not that they weren't smooth or like high quality feeling. Like they weren't chalky or dry or anything, but they just, they lacked pigmentation and intensity. I don't understand how Maybelline could put out anything mediocre. Like you've got the capital. Next up, uh, this is one, I don't know how these are doing right now, but the e.l.f. No Budge Cream Eyeshadows. Oh dear God. Are they pigmented? Absolutely, no dice. They are super pigmented, very, very creamy, and they're super emollient. Like they feel like a concealer. I kept mentioning in that video, they feel like a concealer. But at the same time, they pull and they tug and they do not glide at all. And when they set, which they set down extremely fast, they set for life. I had swatched these on my hand that day and I no joke washed my hands at least five or six times before they actually came off. Like they were like, they are no budge. Which is a good thing when it comes to longevity. But the problem is that you can't get them to look good before they set. They wouldn't blend out with the brush. They wouldn't blend out with my finger. I just could not get rid of the harsh blunt lines. And then it was like sticky. Ooh, I forgot about that. I forgot about the whole issue that caused the trauma to begin with. Why is it making a weird sound? Do you guys hear that? My eyelid right now, it's like whenever I look up, my eyelid skin's like sticking together. Can you see that? Like, yeah, I know everyone raves about Elf's cream products and I know cream products are all the rage right now, but like, yeah, you could have given us a better formula. The Flower Spotlight Liquid Highlighter. So I tried this in my like full face of flower beauty back back a, a while ago. I'll put it up here if you wanna check it out. But this was supposed to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury highlighter wands, which I haven't tried, so I don't know how it compares, but everyone says it compares. And if it does, if it do, I'm glad that I haven't spent the money on that one. My problem with it was that I had no time whatsoever to blend it out. Like as soon as I touched it to my cheek, it started drying and then it would cause patchiness and separation and just this really textured look on my skin. So I don't really know what skin type this is gonna be best for, but clearly some people do like it. The Pacifica Vegan Collagen Lash Primer. This has a pretty high rating on the Ulta website, so a lot of people like it, but I don't know how. My biggest qualm with this was that it was so heavy on my eyes. Maybe that's just the conditioning aspect of it. I don't know. Maybe it's just not a good match for my density. As soon as I apply this, my curl would just fall straight down. I typically don't have a big problem with holding a curl, but this made my lashes so straight and just heavy. Mascara just, my, my lashes were just like, hello, parallel. The Emerson Magic Finish Mousse Foundation from Amazon. Uh, I made two videos on this, so <laughs> I, tr I really try to make this work. Make sure you go check out those videos. I have a first review and I even did a second chance review of this. I went back and I tried to make it work and I tried literally every possible way, every method, every technique, every every makeup artist trick in the book I could come up with and I couldn't make this work. My biggest problem with this was that the longevity of this was horrid. Everything would fade off my face. Cheek products, coverage, everything within a matter of like one or two hours. There's something fishy about Amazon. The fact that there is no one mentioning these things in the reviews, like it's just me. Really? I have a hard time believing that. I know. Just hear me out, okay? The Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in the shade Pinkgasm. Everyone raves about this, okay? Everyone and their mother, brother, father, dog, family cow. Everyone raves about this. The color of this is absolute perfection, okay? It's, it's kind of like NARS Orgasm where it's the perfect shade for everybody. It has such a pretty sheeny radiance that just makes your cheeks look super glassy and juicy and just like plump. My problem is longevity. I'm talking like two or three hours, like by the three hour mark, no later than that, it's completely faded away. And that's also pairing it with a powder blush, okay? I've tried it by itself, doesn't wear well. I've tried it underneath a powder blush, doesn't wear well. Like it doesn't matter what I do with this, doesn't matter what setting sprays I use, what foundations I wear underneath, it refuses to stay on my skin. The Milani Conceal and Perfect Corrector in the shade Melon. So this is brand spanking new. I just reviewed this in my full face Milani video, so 
check that out there. But my biggest issue with this is in the formula. It's not that it wears horribly. It's not that it just makes my under eyes look dry and crepey and it just sucks. My issue with it is that it is an exact dead on formula match to the Milani Supercharged Brightening Under Eye Tint. Now I realized that in my Milani video and I actually did a little comparison, like I put together a side by side of the ingredients of each one. I kid you not, every single ingredient is the same in the same order. So I don't know if they're just doing away with the Supercharged line. I don't feel like they are. Like I, I didn't know this was gonna be a limited edition line. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're just doing away with this one and they're moving over to the Conceal and Perfect for a more permanent line. But I think it's pretty freaking shady. Next loser we have is the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Face Powder. So I got this on Amazon after reading a bunch of reviews, people saying this is like the best powder. It compares to the Charlotte Tilbury one. So it's supposed to be translucent, right? It, I got the shade translucent. It says it on here, okay? It says translucent. That means clear, Physician's Formula. Then why in the hell does it make my face darker? Every time I've worn this, no matter the concealer, the foundation, it always darkens that area. Like it takes away the brightness. It also doesn't do my face any favors. It doesn't make my makeup last longer. It doesn't make my pores look better. It just looks very heavy, very cakey, just Ugh. I feel like Physicians Formula has really been missing the mark a lot lately. Like I feel like they were like they were on high there for a while, and now they're just kind of like it's a slippery slope. I don't know why they can't do better. Like they could do better. They really suck at shade range. Okay, they really suck at it. They can't even do freaking translucent. I'm not gonna stay on this one very long because um, I don't really have a whole lot to say about it because I was pretty underwhelmed from only using one or two shades. But this is the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette, which again I feel like what like Urban Decay used to just they they used to throw out hits. Okay, they used to throw them. Out. Like freaking snowballs like on elf. Naked palettes were all the rage from like what 2000 to 2014. Then they got competition and it's just like oh my god what do I do with competition? So here's what this looks like. It's got kind of funky packaging. I guess you could consider it unique or different. I don't know. I consider it weird. It's got some green tones as it should. It's got a few like peachy corally kind of tones. It's just meh. Okay it's just meh. And honestly if the formula were better this would be a really nice palette. Like, the color story is actually very nice and unique. So it's got potential but then you look at it and I don't know if the camera's making it look better than what it actually is but like this is the look of neglect. What are they doing over there? Are they just gonna stick to the same old naked palette formulation and just never do anything better? Here's what all the shimmers look like. So I feel like the shimmers are kind of, they're, they're, they're the standout of palettes for the most part. Like you've got your mattes and stuff that you have to have to, you know, make a, a completed look, but I feel like the shimmers are the focal point. And what is this? Dry, that's what they are, dry. There's no pizzazz in this palette at all. The mattes are actually a little bit better. They are pretty smooth. They're pigmented, but not overly pigmented. Like I feel like they're pretty easy to work with. There's what the mattes look like, but again, very dull. And I should also mention that they sent this to me in PR. So <laughs> off that list we go. Oh, this is a, uh, this might tickle some feathers. Tickle some feathers. <laughs> It's gonna ruffle some feathers, but it also might tickle some. I don't know, you might find it funny. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This is going viral again on TikTok right now. I can't do it. Okay, so first off, the smell, which I can get past. Okay, I can get past it, but it smells like paint. It's, whoo, pungent. The shade range sucks, okay? I think that's my biggest qualm with it. Like, I think I could get past it if I could actually find a shade that worked for me because the shades are just, they're either too peachy or too pink. They're too cool toned. There's a weird jump from one to the next. I'm just gonna say it, okay? It just, it looks heavy and thick and mega be on me. Maybe that's just because I apply too much because I like full coverage, I don't know. But everyone raves about this and how this is like one of the best drugstore foundations, how it wears really well. On my skin, it looks like something that was used back in, I don't know, like the 70s or something. It looks like pancake makeup. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's just user error. We're still going people, okay? We're still going. New Essence Lash Princess Liquid Liners. I tried all these. Actually, I didn't try the brown one. I had the waterproof black and then the original black. It's the other one's over there somewhere. I'm just gonna show you these guys. But I don't like the packaging, number one. It's just too short and stout and like a, I'm a little teapot. It's just a very fat little chunky applicator and you can get a pretty decent line with this if you're not a novice at liquid liner. You would think that where it's short it would give you more control to where you can make an you know a less wiggly squiggly line but instead I actually feel like it kind of gets in my way like my hand gets in my way the shortness of it gets in my way like I can't I can't maneuver it well enough but also the wear of this 
it's not good. I got bleeding with this. The waterproof is not waterproof at all. I tested it. It's it's a no go. It smeared it. Got in my you know my inner and outer corners. Like I got puddling and stuff, and it just didn't wear very well at all. So these were a total no go for me. The LA Girl Sunkiss Glow Eyeshadow Sticks. Is that what they're called? I tried these in my uh, LA Girl makeup video. I won't put that up there. If you want to check that out, check out all these videos. You, you need something to watch. Okay, enjoy. So uh, these kind of went along the same lines as the Elf No Cream or what's it called? No Budge Cream Eyeshadow shadows same deal you put it on and legit as soon as you touch the stick to your eye and start like placing the color it's drying and you got no time to blend it out with your finger to soften it with a brush nothing like it's just so harsh looking and blunt you just you can't make it or I couldn't make it look good so this next one is one that I really don't want to put in here because I really like I've got a soft spot for it like I really want to make it work this is actually one that I used to use back in the day and within the past couple months it started going viral so I repurchased it hoping that maybe they changed the formula maybe they made some improvements but not for me anyway so this is the essence olive extreme crazy volume mascara no joke if you want a mascara that gives you super big lashes okay i'm talking all the drama all the volume all the length just that super thick black rich lash look this will give you that but the problem that i have with it it's the same problem that i had years ago is that it just smears and flakes and smudges and transfers like it just does not hold up on me at all so i think i'm going to end it there what do we talk about like 20 products 10 <laughs> just 10 but if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like this where i talk about products that don't work out for me uh then let me know in the comments below and also give this video a big old thumbs up here's a couple more things for you to check out next here's a couple videos we talked about throughout this one so yeah for your uh, for your viewing pleasure subscribe if you're not already and turn the notification on to always see my stuff and i will see you guys in the next one Mwah.